Hey everybody, so today we are going to be talking about the duel between RDF and a property graph. So this duel of the ages has driven me crazy. Um, every time I see an article that's talking about one over the other, I want to uh, shake those people. So there is a time and a place for both of these. One is not better than the other. In fact, they are starting to converge more and more. So for those who are, of you who are trying to decide between a property graph and an RDF triple store or quad store, this video is for you. And don't worry, this is just the overview of the differences between these two different types of graphs. We will go over many other real use cases, but we gotta cover the basis first, so let's go get started. What is the difference? So we've talked about knowledge graph on this channel before. This is that manifestation of a knowledge graph. So knowledge graph can take either of these forms. So let's get into the differences and why they're not actually that different depending on your use case. This is not a one or the other. Sometimes you can use them together. So let's start with structure. So when you're talking about property graphs, they don't have a ton of structure. They are not as interoperable, meaning because they don't have a lot of standardization, you can't just pick it up out of one system and put it into another. Systems don't talk to each other very easily. If you decide to change anything in your pipeline, you're going to have a pretty difficult time doing a transition. And hopefully you don't have to do a mapping between different projects. It's a lot of work if you have to do anything different than what you're already doing. That said, maybe you're willing to take that on or maybe you are putting in some data governance to make sure that whatever you're doing in your property graph is standard enough. Also, there are a lot of standards, including W3C, that are looking at making more standards for property graphs. That alludes to when you're in an RDF triple store, you have a lot of standardization. Some might say too much. So if you need something that is going to be like the super container of every single piece of information, and that doesn't mean that you're laying it down on disk, right? You can be linking out to other information. Both Property Graph and Triple Source do that. They, they both use linked data. They both also have a triple-like structure where there's a node, a relationship, and then another node, okay? I'm going to put an example of that up on the screen so you can see it. So both of them have a similar structure. The only difference is when you're in a property graph, you can actually add additional properties onto those nodes. So the example here is Albert Einstein went to a certain university. He attended a certain university. But if that's all you know about that information, you don't know when did he go to that university. So this is a common thing that people point to as far as why a property graph is better than a triple store. Having worked with both many years, you can actually put metadata like that into an RDF triple store. It's a little bit more cumbersome, I suppose, because you have to put that into your ontology and make sure that it is structured appropriately. But you can put a data literal into a triple store just as easily as you can put it into a property graph. So that's the reason you're not going one or the other, dispel that right away. The other thing about having standardization on the triple store side is it does allow you to do machine learning more easily. So a common thing that people point to is inferencing, which I love inferencing. Inferencing is one of my favorite things about Knowledge Graph. So what an inference does, as we've mentioned in previous videos, is it's sort of like a lightweight um, machine learning application where you're teaching those rules to the ontology, essentially, so that it can go through all of your data and automatically make all of those connections for you. Whereas with a property graph, you will have to do that separate from the loading of your data. You're going to have to go through it and you're going to have to make those connections for yourself. Now, if you are working in semantics, if you are dealing with words and linguistic properties, you're probably going to have to use some kind of machine learning anyways to make the relationships because you can't make a lot of rules based on how one topic of interest is related to another topic of interest. 
But if you are dealing with manufacturing data or you're dealing with food data or healthcare data, those might be more um, general, so to speak, so that you might be able to use the out of the box inferencing in a lot of cases. So that is the difference between cat has a tail, Garfield has a cat, therefore Garfield has a tail, right? But if you were trying to figure out, by the way, that can be done in a triple store. But if you were trying to go through and decide how Garfield the cat was related to Odie the dog, that is a little bit trickier than what a normal inference engine can handle. You would have to do any, you would have to do some kind of machine learning or semantic stuff on top of that anyways. So again, if inferencing was your rationale, but you don't need to make a lot of, you know, semantic connections, a triple store probably is going to meet your needs if that's all you're looking at. Again, all of these elements that I'm talking about, these are things that you have to add up all together to decide if you want one or the other or both. Okay, so we went over inferencing, which again, you can really get that feel in both different types. It's just one is doing it natively and one you have to do it on the side. Um, Inference engines can be tweaked, by the way. Um, there's a lot of like open source ones, but of course with any other thing you can find in GitHub, you can tweak it to your own desires. When you are talking about the next piece, it is querying. So when you are doing querying, some people might be uh, okay with doing a non-standardized query. So this would be more like the, um, the cipher kinds of queries that you would do, let's say in Neo4j, which is a property graph, very, very common property graph. There's also some open source ones like Tinkerpop and other ones that you can go check out. But I would say if you're going in the property graph direction, definitely look at Neo4j because they have the most documentation, the most use cases, at least if you're starting out. So some people are okay with that. Again, you're going to have to understand what your staff what your, your, the people that you're working with are going to be able to handle because Sparkle is much more um, standardized. It is a lot easier to learn because it is so standardized. So if you have people that are willing to work on something and learn it and really you know have something that's more custom, then using something like a Cypher is totally fine. If you are trying to teach things like uh, SQL and very standard rigid ways of querying, Sparkle is probably more along the lines that you're looking at. Okay, so the next thing is speed. I feel like there should be a Top Gun reference there. So the need for speed here, if you need speed, that would be something that's more on the runtime application, something that is being done constantly. Uh, something that is uh, being queried, you know, in, in, in split seconds that you have to really serve something up. Now, the reason property graphs are so good at that is because they're not storing all that as rich as they are claimed to be. They don't have all of that additional data um, in triples. It's all kind of added to the concept itself. And that saves on space and how far it takes you or how much time it takes you to do those, those triple traversals. So if you're doing something in runtime, if you just need that surface level data where one node is connected to another node and maybe there's some data on each of those that are just metadata or properties, then a property graph is probably going to be good. That said, there are at least two uh, graph databases that do triples that I would say are close or at least comparable to what a property graph would be able to give you in runtime. And that would be GraphDB and Stardog. Those are both pretty quick in performance, but in a general sense, it can traverse almost as fast or just as fast as a property graph. It all depends on what data you actually have in, in your databases. But property graphs are very good at that runtime application. All right, some other things to consider are the actual tools that are associated with each of these. There are way more open source free tools for property graphs. Again, I think that's because it did sort of come out of like the engineering, you know, 
space where people were, you know, doing a lot of code and they were putting it on GitHub. So it does have a lot in the way of free things out there on the market. Again, triple stores are usually more expensive because there's more validation and, you know, built in functionality with a triple store. Uh, for instance, I know Stardog has quite a few machine learning things that they offer with their packages. There are quite a few options for different graph databases. I'm not going to go through all of them in this video. That is probably a whole nother video. If you are interested in it, give this a like so I know that you're interested and I will go over all of those in a different video. Now let's talk about resources, not resources you need to stand something up. That's different. What I'm talking about is resources that are out there on the web that will help you understand each property graph or triple store. So the triple store vendors, there's quite a few of them. They have a ton of education and learning online. Whereas with property graphs, I would say Neo4j does a great job at, at giving lots of educational material, but ultimately because a triple store is functioning on standards, there are many ontologies out there in the world that are free to use. There are many free and open knowledge graphs that are out there. There's a lot of um, open source things, but because it is standard, you do have a lot more resources out there that are pre-created. So examples of this are like the FIBO ontology, um, the mesh ontology, everything that's on BioPortal. Now with a property graph, there's not as many examples out there in the world that you can get a hold of unless they're free, but those were created for a specific use case in mind. So you would then have to pick it up and transform it into something that you can then use. So again, neither is good or bad. I think both of them, you will have to go in and see how fit for purpose it is. That's actually another consideration. If you are you know, leaning towards a triple store, because they have more out of the box ontologies and standards and interoperability, keep in mind, the more you change it, the less interoperable it will be. So what that means is if you could start out with a triple store, but you go so far away from the standard, it's almost like you should have just went with a property graph, maybe. So now let's talk about how you can bring these two things together. So first of all, there is RDF star, which is a new way of bringing these worlds together. Um, it's really picking up a lot of steam and I'm going to have the articles that are talking about that below. But essentially you have different use cases. You could have, you know, a, a, a mega store of all the information. Again, it doesn't have to be, you know, set down. It could be all linking in. We're still talking that way but you could have a lot more information to do standardized queries on. You can um, have training materials that are a lot faster because it's all standardized. Those all go into why you might want a triple store. There's also a lot of out of the box machine learning. There is a lot of interoperability perks, but on the property graph side, you still get a lot of those things, but when you bring these things together, if you have like this mega store of information, maybe you only need to take pieces of information out of that to create that labeled property graph. So let's say you only wanted to bring out information on people and their dates of birth. If that's all the information you needed, even though in your, your triple store, you have all the other information about that person, you could just extract that information, put it into a property graph, and that thing is gonna fly, right? So that is, in my opinion, how I have used them both together. If you have anything that you need to really retain a lot of provenance, you have to understand, you know, time series data, where something came from, I should say, not processing time series data, um, that I think really belongs in a triple store. And then if you need to do something quick and fast and, and have something going on at runtime, that's really where you want to get into the property graph space. These are just my own personal opinions. They're both wonderful, fantastic tools. And you can absolutely marry these two things together. So I started this video out talking about the pros and the cons of 
of one or the other and how it's a battle of the ages. I think the more mature we get in the graph space, the more these two things are going to come together and live in harmony. And you can see a lot of that representation in RDF star. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to link a lot of that research down below if you want to go and check it out. And with that, I want to thank you very much and I'll catch you next time.